Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for coming out to the uh, press conference today. Um, it's been a whirlwind weekend for us, but we're excited to be here uh, announcing. Well, we announced the fight last week, but we also uh, have something to announce as far as the opponents for MVP and that Bobby Lashley will be added to the card today. Um, when, when I came into Bellator in 2014, uh, the first person I looked up actually was Paul Daly. And I said, we got to get Paul busy. He was already on the roster, but he wasn't fighting much for Bellator at the time. So we reached out and we said, Paul, we really need you to come on board and really be one of our you know, staples of, the, of this company because you, you put on some exciting fights. And I've always enjoyed the relationship with Paul. Uh, and then with Rory, when, I, when free agency started opening up, I said, we got to go after Rory. And, we gotta, and I'm so happy we, we were able to obtain him. And then once we were able to obtain him, we said the first person he should fight is Paul Daly. So I'm glad we could put this fight together. I'm glad we could do this here in the UK for the fans here. Uh, I think it's going to be a spectacular event. Uh, the other fight we're putting together is MVP, who is not here today. I'm sure you guys know he has a flu. But he'll be fighting Derek Anderson to my left uh, from San Diego, California, uh, with a record of 15-3. and three. Uh, Great record. He's been Patricky Pitbull, be some of the big fighters in Bellator. Uh, and then uh, lastly, we have Bobby Lashley over here, uh, who will be fighting. And uh, his opponent to be named soon. But we thought we'd bring Bobby out here to meet you guys and bring everybody out here so you guys could, uh, could ask a few questions. So this time, I just open up to uh, Paul Daly. Or? Yeah. Paul. Uh, hello. I've got a bit of a cough, so just bear with me when you're asking the questions and that. Uh, not too much to say. Um, it's a great fight. I called, called for the fight after my last victory, so I'm, I'm happy that Rory accepted the fight and Bellator could make the fight. Uh, yeah, just look forward to getting it on May 19th. Hey guys, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very excited for this fight. Um, couldn't be a better uh, opportunity for my first fight in Bellator. Paul's, uh, Paul's known for uh, his exciting fights, and, you know, I'm going to meet him in the center, and I'm going to be pushing forward this fight. And like he said, it's going to be a bloody, bloody fight, you know. I don't think either of us are going to be backing down in this fight. And, you, know, you can expect a war. Bobby, you want to give your opening comments about coming to London? Sure. Um, had a little time off, but glad to be back. Scott called me and asked me if I can come out here and fight in London. I love the UK fans, so kind of excited to get back out here. Hopefully we find an opponent soon so I can start um, um, getting the training camp ready. But I'm, I'm excited about May 19th. Uh, I'm excited as well. Uh, moving up to 170. Uh, possibly permanently this time. Um, uh, Michael Page looks like a good opponent. I'm excited to be the shorter guy for a change. Um, uh, I'm going to give him his first test, you know, and he's going to be uh, – he's not going to pass. At this time, we'll open it up for questions if you want to get started. Uh, Derek, first of all, for yourself, um, why did you decide now – was the right time for you to move up to welterweight? Was it always in the plan to do that, or was it just because of the Michael Page fight? Um, well, uh, no, they, uh, <coughs> they gave me the Michael Page fight, and um, after the last time trying to move up to 170 and come back down, it was just a little bit tough, and, uh, you know, I don't want to um, – going back up right now, I might not make it back down. I probably can, but, I, you know, it, I don't want to hurt my body anymore, and uh, I'm confident in my, uh, my skills enough to mess around with the welterweight division a little more now. Uh, wrestling kept me out of the division before, but um, my game's become nice and well-rounded, and I definitely could strike with welterweights anyway. So, Obviously, he's undefeated. So what do you bring to the table that you think can test him, and do you see any holes in his game at all? I mean, he drops his hands all the time. What do you mean holes, you know? Like, uh, you know, uh, I, I definitely um, am kind of a pressure fighter just instinctually, you know? Like, uh, I like to go forward. And uh, being the taller guy, usually in lightweight, like, um, I can't do that. So uh, it's going to be nice to be the shorter guy and uh, – um, put the pressure on them, and, uh, yeah, you know, it'll be a good fight. Question for Paul. Um, obviously, a couple of weeks ago, Paul, the press conference was dominated with the Michael Page talk. Are you just glad that you can now finally move on and Rory's there and this whole press conference is all about you guys headlining this card in London? Yeah, definitely, and as it should be, you know, once the fight was confirmed, you know, all the talk of MVP should have been over with. Uh, 
for me, this is a much bigger fight internationally. Rory's no joke. He, he's been ranked in the, in the top five. Uh, in my eyes, one of the best in the world, the very best. Uh, so, yeah, this is a huge fight for me. It's a huge fight for Bellator. And a question for Rory. Rory, when, this, uh, when, when, when Paul first called you out after the Brennan Ward fight, I know you put a gif out on, on Twitter, but what was your initial reaction? Was that a fight that was number one on your list in Bellator? Um, my reaction was right away was that was a great knockout. You know, I think I even posted something before he called me out like that I thought it was pretty uh, impressive. But uh, that's just my humor, you know. Um, I'm not, uh, I, I don't get scared when people call me out. Just uh, I think it's a, it was a good move by Paul to get some, get some excitement and get people interested in that fight. So, you know, I was, uh, I was happy that he did it so we can make this fight happen. Um, at at the beginning, when I first signed, I figured I'd fight Lima, but uh, it also comes down to timing. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure he had surgery, so uh, you know, not going for the title. The guy to get to the title will be Paul, so you know it's the perfect fight. Question up here. Yeah, uh, this is to Paul. Paul, uh, you mentioned earlier this is a huge fight for you and for Rory because it's you know this is probably the big first crossover with the free agent. Uh, how do you see this working out for you? What's your plan for this fight? Uh, uh, as funny as it may sound, I never really have a plan. You know, I have over 50 MMA fights, over, over 25 kickboxing fights. I've fought every type of opponent, big, small, guys with a range on me, guys with shorter arms than me, uh, wrestlers, jiu-jitsu guys, guys that are willing to, to stand and trade with me. So uh, my aim for the fight is just to get get to uh, being the best version of myself that I can be. Um, you know, like I say, Rory's a tough guy. He He's a true fighter in my eyes. He's well-rounded and he, he comes to finish fights. And, uh, you know, early on, comparisons were made between him and George St. Pierre. But for me, I think he's got a little bit more of the fighter spirit. And I think you've seen that in the Robbie Lawler fight. Uh, that's why I refer to this fight as a blood and guts type of fight. So I, I truly believe Rory has that in him, and uh, I'm gonna be landing punches on him. So hopefully we're, we're gonna see uh, that blood and guts uh, spirit again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just speaking as a fan, this was huge. The minute I heard about it, I was thought this was great. So Rory, what's have you got a plan going into this? You know, I, I have a, I got a lot to redeem uh, coming off two losses and. Uh, also, the, the fact that this is going to be my debut with a new company, the, the statement needs to be made, my performance. And, uh, you know, I've been working hard um, on new things, you know. Um, I de I'm shying away from, you know, point fighting a little bit. I want uh, I want um, my strengths to shine in, in this fight. You know, I want to come after Paul and I want to put it on him. I want to put him away early and in an impressive fashion. Perfect, perfect. Uh, I'd like to echo what Paul said as well. When the comparisons with GSP, I've always thought, you know, GSP, skill-wise, yeah, but, you know, for balls, totally different ball game, you know? So that, it's going to be great. A uh, question for Scott. Um, we've had a couple of uh, unfortunate main event withdrawals. We've got the event coming up in, in, uh, in Ireland, and we've just had the, uh, the Fado Mitrione fight fell through at the last minute. Given that you've got two welterweight fights at the top of this card, is that a conversation you're going to have with all four fighters involved in, in regards to making sure you have a contingency plan in place if the worst were to happen and you were to lose one of the main eventers, that one of the two co-main event guys can step up and take that fight and you've got the agreements in place in advance for that? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, that's something we'll circle back and talk to my guys about. But, um, you know, the Mitrion fight situation was very unfortunate. And, and honestly, in the 31 years of me being in the fight business, that's the first time I've lost a fighter uh, as a main event the day of. I mean, literally hours before the fight happens, you know. And believe me, our company tried our best, but there's a health and safety issue that, you know, we should never cross as promoters. And it got to that point where I said, this is not safe. Let's just pull the plug. And uh, that's what we did. So... You know, it's like I said, it's unfortunate. It's never happened before. Uh, usually fights drop out. You know, I mean, it happens to everybody. This is the fight game. People get hurt. And so, uh, but that's usually weeks in advance or, you know, day. usually you have some days in advance. And and uh, we just didn't have the, any time to to uh, to make something else happen for, for the fights last weekend. But um, uh, I can assure you that we're working on a date right now. We'll have something to announce. I, I want to say by the, 
uh, maybe the end of this week as far as when, when Fedor will fight. And uh, it's going to be exciting, and, uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to bringing him uh, back to, you know, fulfill his obligations with uh, Mitrione. Brilliant. Question for Bobby. Um, I'm sure most people know you sort of juggle two disciplines with the professional wrestling side of your, of your life as well. Talk to us a bit about how you managed to balance that off with the, the wrestling side and the touring around doing that as opposed to the, the perhaps more intense training required for a, a professional fight. Well, right now, professional wrestling, we don't, they don't require us to be there too often. Like, I'm doing it one week every two months. So the, most, the, the rest of the time, I'm just at home um, training and doing what I need to do. I don't do too many um, side bookings or anything like that. I don't do any of that. So I'm just working with TNO exclusively. So we do you know, one week every two months. So it's easy this time. Perfect. And uh, last one for me, for Rory. You're talking about changing up your game, perhaps being a little bit more uh, direct in your approach. Can you give us a bit more detail on that and, and something specific that we can look out for from you on fight night against Paul Daly? Yeah, um, I think you can expect, uh, you know, a, a busy guy. You know, I'm, I'm going to be in your face the whole time. Every every time you take take a step to the side, I'm going to be right there. You know, after I hit you and you back up and you want a breather, I'm going to be right there in your face. You know, when you want to try to come at me, I'm going to put you to the ground and I'm going to beat you up there too. Uh, I think uh, I think my I know my strengths now and I'm not I'm just going to apply them from now on. You know, I'm just going to drown people in my pressure and my attacks. Uh, Rory, you <coughs> said previously that you thought your first fight might be against Lima. Was that ever put forward to you? And did you think that would be your first fight? I kept asking, like, every week, you know, to put that fight together, but it didn't, it didn't happen, you know. Uh, a lot comes down to timing. I understand, you know, like, uh, these guys, they need a break after, after a fight, and, you know, he got hurt, so I understand. And you did mention before when you were signed to Bellator that you'd like to compete in multiple weight classes uh, and then obviously title shots as well. Is that still a goal for you? Yeah, um, I want to fight middleweight, you know, at some point this year, you know, so I can bounce back and forth. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to shy away from stepping up in, in any weight class, you know. To go back to your question, if if someone were to drop out, like say if Paul, you know, got injured last minute, I'll fight anybody on the card. I don't care how big they are. So uh, the Bellator doesn't have to worry about uh, getting uh, a replacement fight. Yeah, even that <laughs> big guy over there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, qu question for, for uh, welcome to London, all of you, anyway. Um, quick turnaround for you all. Um, a question for Rory, first of all. Rory, h how's the nose, uh, first of all, and has the, you know, the surgery and the repair work and sparring, how's it been with it? I didn't need surgery. Um, it's actually straighter and... And breathing's better after after uh, Stephen broke it in, in our last fight. I'd broken it a few times um, previously throughout the year. I just didn't want to stop training. Um, I wish it was in fights, you know. I wish I was I was uh, breaking them in fights, not in the gym, you know. But that's something I had to learn the hard way. So it's I've had to be very patient this year since my last fight. So it's been pretty slow with that stuff. So I can't wait to get my hands on somebody. And... Uh, you know, nose is feeling very good. Um, you know, it's been tested a little bit lately and, and throughout the year, here and there, and it, I'm very confident with it that it's uh, it's 100%. Without trying to cause too much grief between you up there, Paul, it, it, presumably it's, you know, the, the, the neural processes for a fighter uh, do go on like they do for anyone else. Are you targeting that nose? Uh no, I'm just going to go out there and fight. Um, you know me, Gareth, I'm just a fighter, um, born and bred. It, does, it doesn't matter um, uh, too much about tactics for me. Uh, once we're in the cage, it's just, just another uh, man, just another man that I have to get through to, to continue on my journey in this sport. A uh, question for Derek. Um, <coughs> disappointing for you that uh, Michael Page isn't here today and, you know, he, he's a... He, he's a He's an aggressive talker as well as fighter at press conferences. Are you disappointed that he's not here today? Uh, yeah, a little just because, um, you know, get the face off and stuff like that. It would be nice. You know, uh, I'm not really worried about it either way. Uh, we're going to fight May 19th, you know, so that's what it is. Uh, plus, we started talking crap to me, you know, like, uh, I mean, I'm not a big crap talker, you know, back in the day 
with street fights and stuff, it, it was just, you know, once we don't like each other, I'm just going to start swearing at you until we start fighting. So it's fine if he doesn't want to start crap talking right now. Let's just wait for the cage, you know? Maybe a good job he's not here today then. <laughs> um, but well, can you tell us a little bit about your gangster gold tooth going on there as well? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, got knocked out the last fight. So I said, let's put a gold one in, you know? <laughs> like, uh, I think it suits my personality pretty well. And, uh, you know, I always get a lot of... Uh, uh, I don't. I don't intend to be a pretty boy, but people, you know, I kind of come off as a pretty boy sometimes. So the gold tooth kind of fixes that, you know. Uh, I'm definitely a fighter. Excuse me, sorry. Um, and a final one for Scott, and kind of related to Bobby as well. Um, you know, Bobby's a huge star. Um, obviously, you know, he's a big man, one of the big men. As I say, Rory said he'll step up to heavyweight and fight him if Paul's injured, which we're all looking forward to <laughs> now if that happens. Um, but um, presumably, you might be looking to to match Bobby against, say, a um, um, a British fighter, James Thompson, or is there a British heavyweight in the mix for that contest? Yeah, you know what? I know that um, Rich is talking to a few camps right now and um, talking to David Green and some of the other guys around here. So we'll have something soon. And, um, you know, if, if Ollie would have looked a little, you know, maybe a little better on the fight uh, over the weekend, he could have been a great opponent. But, um, you know, I think we're going to move on to somebody else and you know, we'll have something soon. Uh, and a final thing for you, Scott. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance, just a bit of housekeeping, whether you've had a chance to speak to, to Josh Koscheck um, since the weekend. Obviously, he, he, he lost again and you know suffered a fairly nasty knockout. Has he spoken to you about his future at all? Uh, no, we haven't um, spoken about his future. Uh, I did talk to uh, his manager, and I said we should have a talk when I get back. But, um, you know, I just want to see where his head's at. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it's it's... It's, 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 I'm not sure what he wants to do because he's got a great future. The guy has, you know, a thriving business. He is really is uh, doing quite well. And uh, he's with Oak Grove Technologies, which is in the, you know, the, the military uh, consulting business, let's call it. But, you know, he's moved out to North Carolina, has a new future there, and, and uh, he's getting some big, big contract, government contracts from what I hear. So, you know, to me, that's something he loves to do. But, uh, you know, there, there is a time and place to, you know, to, to have that conversation at some point. Thank you very much. Uh, Scott, with regards to Fedor and uh, Matt Mitrione, is the idea to bring that fight back to San Jose? Well, the idea, you know, is to bring that fight back somewhere as soon as we can because the, um, the issue really is the building availability. That's probably one of the most booked venues, you know, in the country. They have over 300 bookings a year in that, in that with concerts and hockey and play all, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, it's, we're trying to figure it out and they're trying to clear some stuff, but we, I would love to bring that fight back to, to uh, San Jose. Fedor told me that, um, look, I can't fight in March because we asked him, would you fight in March in Chicago? Um, and, and he said he, he can't do it. He said he, he'd rather fight in May or June. And so we're trying to make that happen in June. And a few weeks ago, you said that the idea this year is to go into about seven to nine international markets. You've got arguably one of the biggest Canadian stars to your left. Will you enter the Canadian market this year with Rory McDonald? Yeah, that, that is the plan, you know. And so um, when we signed Rory, we, we knew that, you know, Canada was some, something we wanted to do. Um, so I think before the end of 17, we'll be up there and, and, uh, and promoting uh, him in some fights up there, at least one fight up there. Uh, and Rory, um, I wanted to speak to you about Michael Page. I know from speaking to him last year, um, he was in talks, I don't know if it was with yourself personally or with Faraz, to perhaps come out and train with you guys at TriStar. Is that almost a blessing in disguise that he didn't come out now, the fact that you guys are both in the, under the same promotion and fighting the same weight class? Yeah, we were just looking for training partners uh, going to the Thompson fight, but uh, I, I mean, I, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I've trained with lots of guys that I end up fighting. And it's, just, it's just training. It's not a big deal. Question for uh, Paul. Paul, it was interesting <laughs> to see you and... Um, Rory uh, actually meet for the first time in the lobby, especially as uh, you were kind of, in a way, sizing each other up. You said in the past, Paul, that um, he uh, has a certain demeanour about him. What did you see in his eyes? Because I saw there was a moment there, unless I'm reading too much into it, there was a moment there. <laughs> okay, where Mike, Mike. <laughs> Last press conference, he was asking me about, do I like dressing up as a woman? This press conference, you're asking me whether there was a moment between me and Rory <laughs> when I looked into his eyes. That's the one I meant. I don't know what you're getting at. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Basically, you've spoken about, you know, um, he's got a certain demeanor about himself. Now, what did you see when you actually, you know, looked into his eyes today? Uh, 
Phew, not much. Uh, it was just great to meet him, you know. Uh, I, I am a true fan of the sport as well uh, as actually being a fighter. So I've never met Rory. I've seen him fight a lot. Um, I, and like I said, I've been a big, big fan of his fighting style and, and what he does in the cage. So it was just a, it was just a bit of a fanboy moment, really, if anything, just to finally meet the guy uh, before fighting him on May 19th. And the same question to you, Rory. I mean, uh, again, it wasn't as though any man was backing down in that handshake. Uh, it was kind of firm. Um, <laughs> what exactly did you see when you, when you, when you, when you locked horns? <laughs> you got a way of wording things. Uh, you know, uh, just, just showing respect uh, to my opponents. You know, uh, Paul's a real fighter. And, uh, you know, just showing respect. That's all it is. Okay, and finally, Scott, the undercard, I take it you've been speaking to um, the renowned promoter, um, David Green. Um, <laughs> how is that, how are negotiations actually taking place at the moment? Are there any, you know, bodies or people that you've got your eye on in terms of filling the, uh, the undercard? Yeah, we talked about that, uh, David and I talked about that last night, and uh, we're, we're, we're going to work with David to uh, provide the undercard for us for this fight. So uh, as far as names, we don't have anything uh, solid yet, but we'll have something soon to announce. Any further questions? Question for Rory. Um, you briefly touched on wanting to move up to middleweight. How long have you had that thought in your head? For, for a while. Um, I can't like put back when I start thinking about it, but uh, I uh, I'm not too big on cutting weight all the time. Like as busy as I want to be, I want to be busy fighter this year. So the only way uh, only way I'm going to be able to stay that busy, you know, f you know, every three months or so is you know to take fights at a higher weight class. So I don't have to keep making 170 every every three months. So you know, hopefully we could fill in the gaps with some middleweight fights or whatever like that. Okay, and uh, what fights in the division interest you? The biggest ones, toughest guys. So, um, Vanderlei Silva, I'm pretty sure, gets reinstated, I think, in, m in May, if, if that's correct. Let's Is that do a fight it. That that's, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and a uh, question for Scott. Obviously, uh, you're back in the UK in the second time in less than a year. How happy are you to be back here? Yeah, I think uh, excited. I mean, I think that uh, it's a great city, and uh, it's it's a it's going to be a lot of fun to to promote this fight. I mean, we got a fight that I personally can't wait to just sit down and watch it as a fan. And if you look at the um, the ownership group on the business side, you know this is a product that's owned by Viacom, and Channel Five is owned by Viacom, Spike UK is owned by Viacom. It just makes so much sense. There's so much synergy here between the network broadcaster the product, the fighters, you know, myself, we're all, you know, one company. So to me, you'll see uh, a lot more events uh, here in the UK. And uh, it's a company mandate from the top down. And I mean from the very top, not just from the Spike TV level, but from the very top of Viacom, you know, they, they want to make uh, the UK um, someplace that Beltor comes and promotes quite often. So we'll be here, you know, three, four times a year, I think, uh, this year and next year and, you know, and beyond. Okay, and uh, obviously, the Unfortunately, we lost the main event uh, at the weekend. Have you uh, spoken to Matt Mitrion about rebooking him? Um, you know what? Uh, I literally jumped on the plane the day after and got here last night, and uh, I haven't talked to uh, Matt, but I did listen to his uh, his uh, uh, podcast on Ariel on Ariel Hawani's show, the MMA Hour, and uh, I, I found a lot of information about you know what happened and after, you know, because once the fight was over, my guys were in touch with him, but I kind of just took off and got ready to come here. So um, he. He uh, luckily he passed his kidney stone, and uh, he was at the airport in Dallas, from what I hear, when he passed it. Oh, and uh, <laughs> I'm just giving the information that I got. Yeah. So, okay. And uh, a question for Paul: uh, You were briefly eulogizing, uh, or not eulogizing, pra praising Rory there, saying that he's uh, one of the best welterweights. <coughs> Do you think a victory over him would cement your status as one of the best welterweights? Uh, most definitely. Um, I do hold him in high regard, and that is also one of the reasons that I, I called him out. I like to test myself, um, and I think this is a big test for me. But, you know, I, I've been in these tests before and I've passed them. I'm expecting a tough fight, but I'm also expecting to win and uh, win by knockout. Okay. Um, obviously, 
Rory lost his last fight. Do you think he's going to be coming out a bit more guns blazing and because of that? Or For me, watching that last fight, I, I get the feeling, I think I said this last time, that Rory had won... He, like, his mind wasn't there. Like, being a fan and watching the sport, from in my opinion, it was like his mind was elsewhere. It wasn't the Rory that I had I'd watched and seen before. Now, this is not... I don't know personally. This is just purely as a fan. I feel like he already had, had his mind somewhere else. Like, he, he wasn't 100% in this fight. So, I take nothing from his last fight. Um, I, you know, I take nothing from his last fight. Rory's a tough guy. One of the best in the world. And this is, is definitely one of my biggest tests. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah, that fight won't look. This fight won't look anything like that fight. You know, there's a. I have a lot to prove. You know, that fight uh, was is probably the most embarrassing fight of my career. You know, so I want to make a statement with this fight, and I won't. Be, I won't be looking anything like that. I won't be picking shots from the outside, circling. You know, you'll be seeing the old Rory back. Derek. Um MVP is a very big name, especially over here. Uh, he's very active on social media, as Paul found out recently. Um, are you anticipating him being very active in the preparation for this fight? And are you going to get a lot more attention than you normally would? Would that affect your preparation at all? Uh, no, you know, um, every little bit of the uh, <coughs> of the uh, of the game that comes at me, you know, just brings me closer to the game and, and keeps my mind on nothing but the fight. So um, it could be a good thing, you know. And uh, I've always kind of wanted an opponent to kind of, like, I've always wanted to, like, not like an opponent, you know. So hopefully he talks some crap or something like that because, uh, you know, I, I have too much fun in the cage a lot of the time. And, you know, I like to fight. So you see me in there smiling and joking around. But I could go be taking it to somebody a lot more than I am. So, um, it'd be you know, maybe it'd be good if he gets under my skin a little bit, you know. And Scott, what does it mean for yourself as a promoter and for Bellator as an organization to have people like MVP who's a big name? fighting experienced fighters like Derek and having two fighters in their prime in the welterweight division as Paul and Rory are. What does that mean for the organization? I mean, um, you know, MVP is a big star and he's a tremendous athlete and he's something he's somebody that I really enjoy watching, you know, coming from a like a traditional martial arts background. He does a lot of he does a lot of stuff that people just cannot do. And um, you know, like you said, he's in his prime, Derek's in his prime. And these two warriors are going to go out there and they're going to throw it down. I mean, Derek, Derek's not afraid of MVP. I, I can tell you that right now. And he's MVP. I mean, you know, the guy's got a lot of swagger, a lot of confidence. Uh, but I think it's going to be a great fight. I think this is going to be a fight that's that's going to get down and dirty. I think that, uh, you know, the question will be, can Derek cut the ring off and, and get to him? You know, because MVP has some good movement. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. I'll bring it to him for you, Scott. Derek, do you have a plan of how you are going to do exactly what Scott just said and cut the ring and put the pressure onto Mike? Yeah, you know, like uh, I like to be the shorter guy um, <coughs> in uh, in striking matches. You know, like uh, <coughs> I never get to in my fights too much because of the lightweight division, but I do spar with a lot of big guys, and so uh, I'm used to it. And uh, it'll be nice to, um, you know, get in there. I like Paul's style a lot with the head movement and get in there, throw some hooks, you know, so uh, I'll be doing a little bit of that. And, um you know, I can cut a ring off, I can go forward. Um, it's going to be good. Thanks, guys. Scott, at the risk of being barred from all Bellator events going forward with me boringly asking the same question again and again, um, on May the 19th, are you able to say yet that the British viewers will be able to watch the event live? Um, it's going to be the same as last year in the sense that um, 9 o'clock p.m., we will be on Spike UK for one hour, and then from 10 to midnight on Friday, uh, May 19th, we'll be on Channel 5. So it'll be another prime time opportunity for Bellator to be on uh, terrestrial television here uh, throughout the territory. And, and we're excited because, you know, uh, I don't think that there is MMA on terrestrial television right now in the UK. I don't, is it? I'm, I'm not no, sure. I don't think it is. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great way to, you know, to, uh, to show our product to mainstream uh, here uh, in, the, in London and throughout the territory. But um, that goes back to the ownership group. I mean, Viacom's committed. You know, this, like I said, these, this, this came from the top down. I mean, you know, we could have easily said, hey, let's put it on Spike UK, but somebody from the top pushed and said, no, let's put it on Channel 5. And, and the guys here from Channel 5 love it too. So, uh, you know, when we come to London, we do a big fights here. It'll, it'll always be uh, probably the hybrid of Channel 5 uh, for the first hour. I'm sorry, Spike UK for the first hour and then Channel 5 for the next two hours. If, if, if that resonates with, with big viewing figures, which I'm sure it will, 
on Channel 5 on the night. As you say, it's, it's the first time that we've, not the first time ever we've had MMA on terrestrial TV here, but the only one currently. Um, if the numbers are very big, do you hope that that may resonate with future Bellator events? And I know that you can't show overnight shows because they have shopping channel and all those kind of things, but perhaps they might show them on a Sunday evening then um, in their in their broadcast, in their programming. Yeah, I mean, we had a conversation with uh, Spike UK and Channel 5 last time we were here. Uh, they actually came to the press conference, and, and we talked about that, and they heard the, you know, the outcry from the fans and the reporters that, uh, you know, we'd like to get this... Uh, as live as possible, and they're willing to start having conversations about closing the gap on that. And eventually, you know, this is a live, live world anyway. You know, you're going to find it somewhere. And so, to me, uh, you know, I'm hoping to bridge that gap soon, sooner than later. Thank you.